This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Manscaped. Hey there, everyone. Hope you are keeping yourself sane and occupied out there as we remain in quarantine and isolation. Obviously, we wish there were other things to talk about on today's episode, but you're already well aware that there's not a whole lot going on in the world right now because of the spread of COVID-19. I, I, I have to keep apologizing just because I know that people want an escape from this. There's nothing else. There's not a lot else to talk about, and we are sorry for that, but, uh, you know, at least you get a break to watch us talk about something you're already hearing about nonstop. I mean, if you are looking for a bit of escapism, there's that new Tiger King documentary uh, uh, about Joe Exotic that premiered on Netflix recently. It is real good. Yeah, I need to watch it. It's a wild ride. You will uh, you'll enjoy it. But uh, we're here to talk you through some current events, uh, so that's what we're going to do. So first up on the cancellation or postponement side of things... Over the past few weeks, pretty much every major sporting event has either been canceled or postponed. But for whatever reason, people were still holding on to a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, the 2020 Olympics in Japan would still proceed as scheduled. No, how could they do away with the Olympics? Guys, damn it. There, there's still time. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice, a nice celebration that what we could all hoped would be like the end of this chapter in our lives. But it looks like that's not going to be the case because... Early on Monday of this week, we got an update from the International Olympic Committee member, uh, Mr. Dick Pound, Dick about Pound. the situation. And uh, anytime he makes an announcement, you got to listen. Well, people don't listen. They don't listen. They just say like, oh, this guy's name's Dick Pound. Hey, why is Dick Pound trying to... Well, anyway, see you later. It's like, yeah. no, listen, he's got important things to say. Yes, Dick Pound, a man who could have easily used the name Richard Pound so that the world would take everything he says seriously instead of turning every statement he makes into a joke about getting rooted by a well-hung porn star. Richard Kilogram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's me, Richie Kilogram. Yeah. I'm going to change my name to Dick for the win. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, Dick Pound, that guy, he broke the news that the 2020 Summer Olympics have been postponed. And you hate to see it, but in a phone interview with the USA Today, Dick Pound said the following, on the basis of the information that the IOC has, postponement has been decided. The parameters going forward have not been determined, but the games are not going to start on July 24th. That much I know. We will postpone this and begin to deal with all the ramifications of moving this, which are immense. Dick Pound then indicated that the Olympics will most likely be moved back an entire year to 2021, but that all the details they'll be finalized within the next four weeks. So an official word of when it's going to happen within four weeks, but uh, probably uh, not going to happen this year. And that throws off, it starts staggering all the ones behind it. Oh, I guys. doubt that it's going it, to, I don't think three years is going to go by and they're going to have another one. It's going to offset the rhythm mm. that has been in place. Yeah. Not even Hitler could get the Olympics to stop. That's true. He tried. But yeah, I mean, silver linings. We, we like pointing out the silver linings. Yeah. 2021 is going to be a banner year for content. Yeah. Because all the content that was supposed to come out in 2020, yeah. it's all getting crushed into 2021, the super year. Yeah. There's just movies and shows and sporting events constantly. If the virus doesn't kill you, the co like partying so hard, coming back from isolation, that mm. might actually do it. But, yeah. but a much, much more fun way to go out, probably. Yeah. So other sports, um, they're simply adapting to our new reality, though, by going virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, this past weekend, NASCAR had a, held a virtual race where their drivers used gaming rigs complete with pedals and steering wheels to compete in an exhibition race that was broadcast in its entirety on Fox Sports, complete with the actual commentators and multiple camera angles, uh, making it a damn near seamless production that honestly looked as good as any real NASCAR race. I yeah, mean, it was it was wild. I turned it yeah. on. I saw people reporting about it. Looks like NASCAR. And I turned it on the TV, and I was like, this... I thought maybe they were showing an old race because it looked perfect. Like this, specifically the ang angles I was looking at at the time, what, there was a crash and I saw like the less than good looking smoke coming off the tires. Yeah. And uh, the crowd was like, I don't know what happened in NASCAR games, but they just did away with making the crowd move at all. So it's just a bunch of people standing there like this. But the, the fact that they had the actual commentators from the typical mm -hmm. Fox Sports productions of NASCAR, like yeah. Jeff Gordon was commentating on this. Dale Earnhardt Jr. came out of retirement to race in this. That's great. Uh, I think the guy that won uh, was, he was like, it's the first time I've ever raced in my, uh, in, with my bare feet. And I, you know what? I kind of like feeling the pedals. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was pretty hilarious hearing the earnest commentary over video game footage. But it all worked out quite well. And NASCAR, as well as esports fans, seem to have reacted quite well to the whole production, all things considered. Yep. This there, is, the, this is the, the closest you're going to get to the real thing right now. Yeah, there's, I saw some uh, screenshots of Facebook posts where, like, legitimate NASCAR fans were like, well, if this is all we get, it was a pretty damn good job. This, the beer prices were a lot cheaper, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, just, I just had to walk to my fridge, no lines. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, in addition to sports, we're seeing more and more productions move straight to online-only experiences by utilizing live streaming on social platforms like Twitch and YouTube. Uh, a bunch of DJs continue to stream on a damn near nightly basis. And this past weekend, in order to make up for a canceled festival that was supposed to take place here in Southern California, Insomniac opted to host the Beyond Wonderland Festival entirely online with nightly live sets from artists who were scheduled to appear at that festival, but instead showing up to the Insomniac office to perform for viewers online, but in a room that was occupied by only a few ne necessities, like a, like there's one cameraman, yeah. the rest of it was stationary ca cameras, there was a, a lighting director, and uh, yeah, it was just some socially distanced employees. They they kept their distance from mm -hmm. each other, and after each set, the, uh, the decks... They would be disinfected completely, which was great. And the only fan that was partying in the room mm. was the company CEO, Pasquale Rotella. It was, it was really cool. They did, I think, two full nights with full schedules. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a fun experience. Now, meanwhile, some celebrities and musicians simply can't fucking handle being trapped in their mansions. We already spoke about the completely tone-deaf rendition of Imagine, spearheaded by Gal Gadot. But following that came videos from Ellen and Sam Smith which just showcase their complete inability to cope with what's going on. Oh my gosh, I'm all alone in my castle. What do I do? Yeah, listen, people, if you have a house, and specifically a backyard, if you have, I'm not saying land, like acres yeah. of land, but if you have grass, yeah. you're doing a lot better than like 90% of the people. Yeah. I, you get a, a private place to go outside. What a wonderful thing. If, so if you have a house and a backyard, specifically if you're a very rich celebrity, you shouldn't be complaining about any of this shit nope. for at least a few more weeks. In in fact, you should probably never complain because there are entire families who are sharing studio apartments right now. Yeah. So just stop it, okay? Stop. You're not making things better. You're not you're not like uh, connecting emotionally with your fan base. Your fan base can't connect with you because you're you could be like. You know what? I'm bored in this room. I'll just go over to one of my other seven rooms in this house. Yeah. Go over to my third breakfast nook. Yeah. Try things out over uh, there. Well, I guess I should go to my library and pick out a uh, book to read. I'm bored. I'm going to go ride one of my horses. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just go for a dip in my pool or hot tub. Mm. Wow. I'll enjoy the, the view of the Pacific Ocean at the top of this mountain. It's like living in your own private hotel. So fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. Log off. Still, though, there are plenty of people who are just straight up not complying with government led orders and guidelines. Saw a lot of them on the way here. Yes. We're essential. <laughs> of so course. Obviously, yeah. we need to come here. But mm -hmm. there was way too many cars on the road that I was like, I see you. Where are you going, buddy? Mm -hmm. So this past weekend, ugh, Californian citizens just embarrassed the shit out of their state by just going down to the beach for a fun-filled weekend of basketball and beer pong. Yeah. Not a care in the world. Cool look. Because of that, they ruined it for anyone who might have just wanted to go for a little walk on the shore while still remaining at a safe distance from other people. Because as a reaction to the footage shown around the world, our governor made the choice to just lock up all the parking lots at all the beaches, parks, and trails. So thanks, assholes. Yeah, up until this point, it would have been, you know, if you could stay away from people, you could go for a hike. Yeah. Or go to the beach. I saw... I. I forget who it was, but one of our friends, one of the guys from the Schmodown, they packed lunches and just sat in their car looking out at the beach. Yeah. It's a nice picnic, but uh, now you can't even get close enough to do that because nope. uh, it's all locked up. They so. ruined it. Mm-hmm. Jerks. Yeah. So, yeah, we all just have to stay at home. But, listen, it's not all bad. Like we've said before, there's plenty of good stuff available on streaming platforms, and more is becoming available every day as major studios scramble to make some kind of money off the productions that had their theatrical runs cut short or outright canceled. Uh, Half-Life Alex came out. So oh, it's if you're, out? If you're a person that owns a VR rig already, they're impossible to get now. It's all sold out because of this mm. game and isolation. But it looks incredible. I watched Bruce and uh, Lawrence. Mm. They're, they're both streaming it separately today, and it looks unbelievable. Like what we all dreamed VR would be. Yeah, I watched the preview uh, streams of it, and I was like, "Yeah, looks pretty fun." Yeah, G gaming in general, it's it's crushing it right now, obviously. But this was actually confirmed recently as Steam repeatedly set new records for highest active users of all time. First by hitting 20 million users last weekend, and then jumping even higher to 22 million users even more recently. That's crazy, especially because this is the most segmented the PC uh, world of gaming has been in years. Yeah, there's like, way more options yeah, for launchers. Yeah, there's, there's so many different launchers now. Mm -hmm. It's not just Steam. So the fact that there's even now hitting and breaking 
all their records. Yeah. Fucking wild. Uh, board games and puzzles, they're also becoming harder and harder to find under normal prices via online retailers like Amazon as people become desperate to find something to do with their roommates, significant others, or families. You can go down to your local puzzle bar. Yeah, bring just a, steal bring it. Bring a rock. <laughs> take the window. I had to buy a puzzle off of eBay because all the puzzles that were left on Amazon were not great. But I'll tell you what was nice. A little piece of humanity. Yeah. Uh, when I got the puzzle in the mail today, they wrote a very nice note. They were The person on eBay was like, stay safe. Hope this puzzle brings you yeah. joy. By the way, I coughed all over this thing. No, I washed my... So here's, here's my tip. This is what I've been doing because I have ordered food just like you yeah. have. Bring the stuff in, unwrap it, set it down, wash your hands, then spray some... I have some spray uh, sanitizer. Spray it on that. And then you're doing the best you can. On the food? No, not on the food. On like the puzzle box. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Listen, you just, not, no one's going to be perfect at this. You just got to try, okay? Yeah, well, I've washed, I've been washing my hands like 20, 30 times a day. Yeah. It's just like, oh, geez, well, just touch something. Take the trash out, wash your hands. Open yeah. the door, wash your hands. Get in the car, yeah. wash your hands. But yeah, even if you could find some form of physical entertainment for sale for a decent price on Amazon, you can now expect to be waiting a really, really long time before you actually get your hands on it as... Some users are now reporting estimated shipping dates of up to a month from the service that has historically been able to get you your items within one or two days. Yeah. Uh, this is, of course, because Amazon is currently prioritizing things like food, beverages, medicine, and other vital essentials while putting non-essential items on hold for a bit. Mm -hmm. Our advice is just pony up the money for a copy of Tabletop Simulator and then download whatever board game you want. Because, uh, honestly... They have, uh, they have a lot of, of official stuff. A lot of official stuff, but uh, the community-made games are perfect. in there. Uh, there's a lot of options. And they're scripted, so the game yeah. does a lot of the work of like counting things or shuffling things correctly for you. Yeah. And from what I've seen, you know, you can turn a blind eye, but from what I've seen, a lot of the devs of physical games are all like are happy to turn a blind eye to yeah. this, this kind of, especially right now. Yeah. Especially right now. Yeah. So, yeah, Tabletop Sim is great. It's like $20. And it goes on sale all the time. But uh, it's great. You can pretty much play any It's on game. sale in the U.K. right now, but not in the U.S. Use that VPN. Uh, yeah. But, hey, if you're lucky enough to live with your girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, fuck buddy, or whatever else, you can also just bang nonstop. You just got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Luckily, new guidelines have been released so that everyone can be as safe as possible while going to pound town during this pandemic. And we'll get to that right after we thank today's very fitting sponsor, Manscaped. Yeah, first things first. Mm -hmm. If you're in lockdown and you're using a good portion of your free time making whoopee, as they say on, what is that, Hollywood Squares? Something like the, that. The, 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 anyway, you're yeah. going to want to look your best up, up here and also down there. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, you're probably not exactly dressing your best while stuck at home. And I hope you're fucking showering. Yeah. I mean, we've been in pajamas the majority of the day ourselves, but there is really no excuse to let your mane around your vein uh, go untamed. <laughs> That's why you need Manscaped. Ooh, ouch, fuck. Those are the screams that you might have made when shaving the old-fashioned barbaric way. But yeah. now you can drop that ball shaving anxiety because you won't have to worry about cuts and nicks thanks to the new Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0, their third generation trimmer featuring advanced skin safe technology that keeps your bad boys nice and smooth. <laughs> the Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created, and they've just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. And when we say premium, this thing is premium. It's got a battery that lasts 90 minutes, so no main can yeah. remain untamed. Uh, they've also got a USB charging uh, stand for you and a LED light on the trimmer that uh, illuminates those crevices for a, a closer, more precise trimming experience. So try out the Lawnmower 3.0 today and get 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our promo code TODAYDAILY20 at checkout. Get 20% off and free shipping with that promo code TODAYDAILY20 at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com with code TODAYDAILY20, all one word, no spaces. Trim up, boys, because you ain't going anywhere for a while. Your partner will thank you. You will thank yourself, and we will thank you. And thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring today's episode. Yeah. Now, let's get to that news. Yeah, so uh, you, you know about self-isolation. You know about social distancing, and you're trying your best to make the hours go by as quickly as possible while in lockdown. Why not just fuck like rabbits? Well, you still got to play it safe, folks. And thankfully, the New York City Health Department has got you covered with some protocols for your pandemic pound parties. 
First and foremost, uh, can you have sex right now? Well, yeah, sure. But, quote, here are some tips for how to enjoy sex and to avoid spreading COVID-19. So first off, they reiterate the facts on how COVID-19 spreads, but they also provide some information that we were previously unaware of. Uh, yes, the virus does exist in your fecal matter. However, quote, COVID-19 has not yet been found in semen or vaginal fluid. Mm. And, quote, we know that other coronaviruses do not efficiently transmit through sex. So there you go. Is that a green light, Mr. de Blasio? I think it might be. <laughs> Still, though, you can never be too careful. So, quote, have sex with people close to you. You are your safest sex partner. Masturbation will not spread COVID-19, especially if you wash your hands and any sex toys with soap and water for at least 20 seconds before and after sex. Which you should be doing anyway. Let's be honest. Wash those dildos, ladies. Wash those hands, gentlemen. Hand wash, not dishwash or safe. And you know what? Wash the dick, too. Wash your penis. Next up, fuck your roommates. Or your stepbrother or stepsister, I guess, because the next guideline says... The next safest partner is someone you live with. Hello, stepbrother. Didn't see you there. Oh, hi, stepbrother. <laughs> Having close contact, including sex, with only a small circle of people helps you prevent spreading COVID-19. Are they promoting polyamory now? I believe they are. This shit is getting out of hand. You should avoid close contact, including sex, with anyone outside your household. Mm. If you do have sex with others, have as few partners as possible. Oh, oh no, you're slut shaming. Yeah, but still, New York seems to get pretty wild. Yeah, I guess. Like, if you're living with a bunch of roommates and you guys need to get it out and everyone is consenting to this, yeah. just get one of those rat king ball going, <laughs> balls going where you don't know which way's up yeah. and just start fucking. Turn off all the lights. <laughs> Except for the black light. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, if you, <laughs> it continues. If you usually meet your sex partners online or make a living by having sex, consider taking a break from in-person dates. Video dates, sexting, or chat rooms may be options for you. I am not entirely sure, but I assume that New York is not legal prostitution land. No, but... Uh, they're, they're out of an abundance of caution. They know it happens, so... Yeah, that's the thing. Whether whether sex work is legal or illegal or in the You gotta area, stay safe. It's the oldest profession. It fucking happens. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about... I don't know the specific laws, but I, I, I have a feeling New York City probably... It's probably more on the decriminalized side than the, <laughs> sure. the biblical side. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, the next section is the most heartbreaking one to read for millennials and Generation Z alike. Two generations who have pushed the limits of sex to their limits. Section three, take care during sex. Kissing can easily pass COVID-19. Avoid kissing anyone who is not part of your small circle of close contacts. Washing up before and after sex is more important than ever. Wash hands, sex toys, disinfect keyboards and touchscreens that you share with others for video chat, for watching pornography, or for anything else. Okay. All right, yeah, pretty standard. But folks, we regret to inform you that ass is off the menu. Sorry, everyone. Shut it down. <laughs> That's right. No ass eating during the pandemic. Yeah. Quote, rimming mouth on anus might spread <laughs> COVID-19. Virus in feces may enter your mouth. So, sorry, Shibs, yeah, wherever we, you are. Yeah, we hate to say it, but you got to stop eating ass. But there are ways, you know, if you, if you simply got to. <laughs> if you got to do it. There are ways to attempt to do it safely. Quote, condoms and dental dams can reduce contact with saliva or feces, especially during oral or anal sex. You know, Generation Z is going to say, don't show me a buffet I can't eat. <laughs> I can smell that Salisbury steak, and damn it, I want some of the gravy. Jesus. Well, we're going to get demonetized anyway, so. Yeah. Anyways, the New York City Health Department's uh, sex and ass-eating guidelines, they wrap things up by saying, you can also just skip out on the sex if you or your partner or your five fuck-fest roommates are sick. And listen, it's definitely, yeah, a little odd to see such an explicit release from a government authority but these are the kind of blunt orders that people need to read in order to stop the spread. You can't claim ignorance now. Because yeah. when, sh when you show up to the hospital and the doctor asks how you potentially caught it, you're going to have to tell them that you probably got it eating ass, even though New York City and Internet Today told you not to, at least temporarily. Ass is off the menu. Off the menu. Ass is canceled for now. Just Or be safe. Get out the saran wrap and go to town, I guess. Well... Yeah, that's it for today. We got more news coming up. Yeah, throughout we're gonna do the week. Uh, a live stream with uh, Stephen Larson. Yeah, it's been this a week. while. Uh, if I, I, I'm pretty sure the schedules have worked out, 
there should be a live stream happening tomorrow with Steve and Larson. Okay. So look forward to that. We're going to keep you company during this whole thing. Uh, wait, in, in addition to that, also, uh, I it, the news conference was it was like three hours today. It was still happening when I was finished writing this, but. Uh, it's looking the like... The Trump news conference, yeah. The he, Trump is going to be like, listen, we can't like, keep this going. Look, it's man, been a week. We're still dying. Look, all the old people are going to die. It's fine. Say bye-bye to grandma. Bye-bye. We got to <laughs> get the economy back going. Yeah, it seems to, to, to pretty much everyone, and it seems to be a conservative talking point at this point, that uh, we're going to have to sacrifice some lives in order to get the economy back in order. On the right side, though, one of those lives is Rand Paul. <laughs> and we're going to get to that in the... The next episode. And Harvey but, uh, Weinstein. Yeah. We were right, once you, again. You hate to see it. Absolutely hate to see it. Um, but yeah, say bye-bye to Grandma. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, the, did you see the one, uh, the lieutenant governor of Texas, who was like, I've talked to local grandparents, and they are willing to die to save this economy. Oh, my God. So thank you for your service, boomers. Uh, thank you for your sacrifice. Sorry. Your sacrifice will save yeah. us all. Yeah. Okay. Well, apparently, anyway. he's the, apparently, according to this guy, word on the street is that Grandparents are willing to sacrifice their lives in order to save the economy for their children and their children's children. I don't believe you. Neither do I. Nope. No. Boomers are the most selfish people on the face <laughs> of the earth. This, this governor is lying. Yeah. They have voted against any kind of, like, social safety nets for their grandchildren and children yeah. for decades. And now yeah. they're going to fucking, now they're going to let themselves die to this fucking virus so people can go back to work? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not unless they pass some like sweeping law that's like uh, all people over fifty five uh, they get paid like a million dollars. A million dollars, <laughs> and uh, all the young people have to go to work. Yeah, that would be uh, the yeah. Well, let's get it into law right now, baby. Yeah. Woo. Well, anyway, watch our most recent completely outdated by now episodes <laughs> if you yeah. haven't already. There's still some fun stories in there. Yeah. Weekly Weird News is always chock full of some fun. So yeah, check out our old episodes over here. You got nothing to do anyway. You're not doing shit. And we'll see you next time. Bye.